Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! A new study explains for the first time how nanoparticles like those in diesel exhaust fumes cause heart disease and strokes by lodging in inflamed blood vessels. It comes ahead of a High Court hearing tomorrow where the government will be asked to explain its last-minute bid to delay publication of the UK's clean air, uh, clean air plan. Our science editor Tom Clark has this report. Air pollution is bad for us in lots of different ways because it's made up of lots of different things harmful gases, dust and soot, but also tiny nanoparticles with diameters a thousand times smaller than a human hair. This new research suggests these nanoparticles could be the ones responsible for air pollution's proven link with heart disease and stroke. We've shown that these very, very small nanoparticles are actually small enough that they can cross out of the lung into the blood. And more concerning, is that these small nanoparticles then seem to preferentially accumulate at areas of disease. And this is what's really worrying. If these particles could reach area of disease, this is where they could have the really serious health consequences. Previous work in this lab in Sweden has shown breathing in dilute diesel fumes while exercising can affect the heart and blood vessels. But diesel nanoparticles are too small to see in human tissues. So the researchers got volunteers to breathe in harmless but traceable gold nanoparticles. And here they are, seen as dark specks in cells around blood vessels, confirming in principle at least that what we breathe goes far beyond our lungs. So how many of these nanoparticles are we actually breathing in? Well, to get an idea, I thought I'd do my normal cycle commute, but wearing this fine particle monitor. It's got an air tube here that draws in the air around me and a readout on the monitor box here. And as you can see on this quiet back street, it's showing about three micrograms of fine particles in every cubic meter of air. So let's see how that changes. So as you can see, my daily commute takes me through some pretty busy London traffic. Lots of it idling diesel taxis and buses. And that of course means lots of air pollution and lots of those tiny particles. So right here where my route crosses London's busy Euston Road, levels are much higher, sometimes in excess of 25 micrograms per cubic metre of air. That's an important number because it's higher than the World Health Organization's daily safe limit for fine particles. Those numbers are only representative. The device we're using measures particles as small as 100 nanometres but those found in blood vessels are even smaller. With their risk to health becoming clearer, scientists say authorities need to monitor them better. So how do they react to efforts by government to delay its long-awaited strategy for dealing with air pollution? We're really disappointed. We don't see the need for further delay. It's clear the report is ready to be published and we don't think there's any reason to delay any further because every day we delay, it's putting back the time when we can save more lives. Tomorrow morning, the High Court will decide whether to allow the government until after the election to publish its air quality plans. And in a statement, the government has told us they are firmly committed to improving the UK's air quality and cutting harmful admissions. They say they will be updating their plans shortly to further improve air quality. And I'm joined now by the Conservative MP and Chair of the Commons Environment Committee, Neil Parrish, who says he'll continue to hold the government to account on poor air quality. Also, the former Shadow Environment Secretary, Rachel Muscle. Neil Parrish first. The government has been told that it needed to act for five years at the very least. It's been dragged through the courts. What is the implication, do you think, of this further delay? Well, I think they're going to have to explain themselves before the High Court. I also think that it, we really need a scrappage scheme in place. Uh, we nearly need, we need to get as many of the older diesels out, out of certainly central London and our central of our cities. Uh, and of course, bus. Abraham? 
yeah, probably, um, and also probably carrots and sticks. So it could maybe a complete ban on certain aged diesels. Um, it could well be that we target to a scrappage scheme towards those um, that, that need the help most. Because one of the problems I foresee is that many of the cars that we need to get out of our inner cities in particular uh, probably belong to people who can least afford to change to a new car. So I think we may, may have a scrappage scheme towards uh, even perhaps support towards public transport in order to take that car off the road. We're going to have to think outside the box and I really want the government to come up with some plans soon because they have delayed too long. OK, well, perhaps if it's a Labour government, would you also suggest a scrappage scheme? Well, absolutely. I mean, we've seen the government dragged through the courts now three times and obviously now delaying again on publishing plans. And that's a deep concern because we're talking about 50,000 lives a year. And as the science advances, we're now learning of new health threats that are coming. So I believe that Labour, you know, have got a very clear strat strategy of how we'll move forward, not just look like the government did at six areas, but all, at all 43 areas making sure that all areas have the resources to put the, the mitigation in place. But it was a Labour government that drove the switch to diesel. Why should the motorists now pay the penalty for that? Well, that's why there needs to be a government-supported um, scheme. We know back then, obviously, both parties, the Conservative Party joined Labour in supporting the, the promotion of diesel in order to move people away from lead-based fuels. But as we move forward, the science is advancing and government has a responsibility to respond to that. Well, you warned the government not to target your rural constituents. Mm. You're quite happy for city drivers to pay the penalty. There's a certain amount of hypocrisy in that, isn't there? No, because I think what we've got to tell is that the, the, it's the older diesels in particular we want to, to take out. I'm also aware that we need to deal particularly with the terrible v bad air quality in the inner city. So I'm not, I, don't, I think we, if, we, if we target our resource towards making sure we've got electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles, electric taxis, um, hybrid buses, even hybrid vans and, where possible, lorries in order to reduce that in those inner cities, my view is target those areas because that is where the where the people are suffering now but do you think the treasury's dug its heels in in funding a scrappage scheme do you think that's what the delay is really about now the treasury always likes to spend money sparingly and so it doesn't matter which government it is i dare say so therefore i think then very much targeting because i'm very concerned about those in our inner cities um, and the quality air quality and so therefore i think you know when money is tight then let's actually really target it towards those people that really need it most. You'd like to spend a bit more cash on a scrappage scheme, would you? Well, I, I mean, we're talking about investing to save. I mean, we're talking about 38 million people now living in an area of illegal air quality. 50,000 people experiencing respiratory disease. The cost to the NHS in itself is extortionate. So you have got to put the investment into the system. But you've still got an upfront cost there. I mean, how are you going to pay for that? Raising corporation tax? I mean, you've spent that money six times over already. Well, we're not talking about a lot of money comparatively in order to make sure that we're addressing the problems of air quality. I would just raise the number of days people are taking off sick now as a result of the, the poor air quality in the City of London, but in other cities as well, like my own constituents where, again, the council haven't moved forward on the air quality plans see, that we, need to be we put have, in place. We have moved a, quite a number of people now. We spent over £400 million on, on electric vehicles. We, we spent some £100 million on, on charging points. So we are moving in the right direction. But what I actually want to see is us move much faster because we have got to be concerned about the health of everyone. But I think and targeting has got to be right because... Well, you mentioned yeah. targeting now. Yeah. I mean, the EU sets these clean air targets. Mm. We're about to pull out of the EU. Do you think Brexit will let the government off the hook? No, I don't, for the simple reason that whichever political party you represent, everybody wants a cleaner environment. They want to be able to breathe healthy air. So, therefore, I don't think it lets anybody off the hook. I think you'll find that, that whichever party you are, Conservative, Labour, Liberal, Democrat or whatever, you will be absolutely keen to get a very clean environment. Issues like converting the buses is a really simple win and will sh massively shift the air quality across the city. And that's why I mentioned my city, because th we want to move that forward, apart from the restrictions that have come down from government. So there are little the steps that can be taken to really okay, make the, the difference. E but the EU would hold, help hold the government's feet to the fire. Well, and you've said you won't be trying to overturn Brexit. Do you regret that from the Labour 
HQ? Well, I didn't vote to trigger Article 50, nor did my city. And the reality is because we had fears about the way, first of all, the government behind the scenes were trying to water down the air quality standards. But so obviously, you we regret know the party hierarchy's so decision uh, to say they won't overturn Brexit. Well, Labour are totally committed to addressing air quality because we know that the courts hold the government to account. And that's really important to make sure that we see delivery of higher air quality across the country. Fred, I've got to end it there. Rachel Maskell, Neil Parrish, thank you. I'm sorry, I've got to end it there. They will the indeed. End. Thank you very much.